achieved. I think it's, um, it's incredibly important to remember the things that they did and the fights that they had and the tremendous courage that they, that they showed and to remember how long they had to do this. I mean, this was nearly 10 years before the First World War broke out that they were involved in the, in the actual recent campaign of the suffragettes. There have been campaigns before that, of course. But the, they were faced with all sorts of complete brutality. Um, the force feeding, which is, has been described um, from Sylvia Pankhurst's experience, the arrests and um, assaults that they suffered, on uh, demonstrations, all the other little sacrifices that they made. And we should remember, when we're told um, that Britain is one of the most civilised countries in the world, as we're always told this, that this was a country which only a hundred years ago, uh, its ruling party, or one of its ruling parties, and in fact, in reality, both of them, uh, believed that women were too stupid, too uh, ignorant, too unworthy to even have a vote. Now, you know, when they lecture everybody else, I think it's worth remembering exactly how much this was the case and how much this was an international campaign. In country after country, women had to fight for the right to vote. Actually, women in France, for example, didn't get the vote until 1945. Uh, in many countries, they, uh, they had to wait much longer than they did here. And even when uh, women got the vote here in 1918, it was only for women with property over the age of 30, as if obviously dangerous 21-year-olds were, you know, redeemed as too extreme and too uh, reckless to be able to, to get the vote. So it's very important to put all that in the context and to pay tribute to this incredibly uh, important chapter in the lives of, uh, of, of women and in the lives of women's campaigning, but also to remember not just that we're in their debt, but that power never concedes anything without a fight and every time people have fought for their rights whether it's, uh, it's to do with uh, the right to vote which uh, black people were having to fight for in the united states until very very recently until well within uh, well within my lifetime whatever the issue is people stand up for their rights and you find that they are opposed by the people in power they are opposed by the parliament they're opposed by the police they're opposed by all these different uh, kind of people it's also worth remembering and it's you know this is a magnificent church and obviously we're here because it was the site of uh, emily wilde and davis's funeral but it's also worth remembering this church is famous for know that for many things. One of the things that it is known as, it appears in, or its spire appears in Hogarth's drawing of one of his drawings of Gin Lane. And that was, those drawings were a depiction of poverty, of misery, of inequality in London, when London was already one of the richest countries in the world. And I think we should remember how much that is still the case. If this wasn't just something that happened 200 years ago or 100 years ago, we're still living with levels of poverty and levels of inequality that, uh, that are deeply shocking in such a rich city, in such a rich, uh, rich country. A year after uh, Emily died, the world, or Europe um, and Britain, were plunged into the worst war that anybody had seen uh, uh, before it was by far the worst, uh, worst carnage that anybody has seen, with millions and millions of people, uh, people dying. Now, what you had in the suffragettes was a real division inside the suffragettes. A division in terms of questions of class and whether they supported the strikes against inequality, which had been going on before 1914, where Sylvia Pankhurst famously split from her um, her mother and her sister in order, to, uh, in order to support those kind of campaigns. And when the war broke out, some of the suffragettes were very much opposed to the war. Some of them, like Emily and Christopher, were enthusiasts for the, uh, for the war and, uh, and great supporters of it. But that war led to, or one of the reasons that, the, um, that women got the vote in 1918 was because of the big changes in women's lives, that they didn't uh, play the same role that they had before then. They began to work in factories, they began to work as bus conductors and bus drivers. In fact, the first strike for equal pay was in 1918 and was the women bus workers in London who wanted the same rights as, uh, as men had had. And that really changed women's lives. And of course today, 
it doesn't seem possible in a country like Britain that people can say that women don't, don't get the vote or, or that women should at least be normally, legally equal to men. But of course we know that many, many things have changed, but they haven't changed fundamentally. But women still have the lowest paid jobs. They still don't have equal pay, even in the 21st century. They still don't have many of these things. And of course they are still subject to the most horrible, kind of sexualised, commodified culture, which has been so much the... Uh, and so much have been in the news in recent, uh, in recent months with all the cases that people have uh, talked about. The wars are still continuing. You need to remember that people being force-fed today as we, uh, as we have this meeting in Guantanamo Bay, uh, people are on hunger strike and they are being force-fed by the authorities. So these are people who have never been tried, never been convicted, who have been in that prison far longer actually than any of the suffragettes were in prison. So should we remember that kind of barbarism still continues. The economic barbarism of inequality, the growth in inequality which, which Mel referred to still continues. So I think we should celebrate tonight the life of Emily Rowling Davis and we should celebrate the great achievements that the suffragettes gave us. But we should remember that this wasn't as they would like us to view it in history. It isn't like um, the way that uh, uh, it is depicted in history that was just a few women who, uh, who managed to achieve this. It was about a real fight and a real struggle along all, over all sorts of different issues, and one of them was the right of women to assert their equality. I think that we should celebrate what they did. We should also use this evening to dedicate ourselves to continuing that fight for equality, to continuing the fight for women's liberation, continuing the fight to make a better world.